Okay, so now I wanted to talk about a simple problem for our system of two spin one half particles. So we just talked about last time that our basis states, or at least one set of basis states we can use, are, are these, where these vectors just mean, you know, this one means both particles are spin up, this one, the first one is up, second one is down, and so on. So we have four possible combinations. And since these are our basis states, our most general state vector can be written as a linear combination of these four basis vectors. And the problem I wanted to look at is just, again, we're going to have our two particles in a magnetic field that's in the z direction. And so our Hamiltonian will just be basically the sum of two of our you know, single particle Hamiltonians that we dealt with before. And this problem is going to be easy to solve because it's easy to see that our basis, uh, all of our basis vectors are eigenvectors of this Hamiltonian. So for example, if I act this Hamiltonian on this state, well, this will just, you know, it just acts on the first arrow. So I get an h bar over two. This one acts on the second arrow. I get another h bar over two. So they add or well, subtract. So I get a total of minus gamma v h bar. So it's an eigenstate. For these middle two terms, for one of these, I'll get an h bar over two. For the other one, I'll get a minus h bar over two. So if I'll cancel out, so they'll have eigenvalue zero. And then lastly, it's opposite. I get a gamma b h bar. So um, that's really good that our basis that we've expanded our state in is, uh, you know, an eigenbasis, or they're all eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, because we can solve a problem immediately. All we have to do is say, you know, this is our initial state. To get our state as a function of time, all we have to do is multiply by the time evolution operator. And if you do that, you'll just get this. So, you know, this term, I'll, I have it. The time evolution operator is, you know, e to the minus i h t over h bar. So each term, it just multiplies through, and then I replace h with the corresponding eigenvalue. So here I've replaced it with minus gamma b h bar. And then in these two terms, I replace it with 0. So I have an e to the 0, which is just 1. So those exponentials go away. And then in this one, I replace it with gamma b h bar. So, uh, so we've solved the problem. It's, and again, it's easy to do because the states that we expanded our state vector in, the basis states that we expanded our state vector in, happen to be uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. Uh, another thing I wanted to, to talk about are the, is the matrix representation of our operators. So we know, you know, now we have a four-dimensional system here. So our matrices should be four by four matrices. And the question is, how do we, you know, I have my Hamiltonian here. How do I see that this is represented by a four by four matrix? Because all I've written here is that my, you know, S1Z is a two by two matrix, and so is S2Z. And I have one minus the other one. How do I get a four by four matrix out of this? Well, this is why last time I talked about the Kronecker product stuff. So when I write this down, really what I mean is this. So whenever I have, you know, a one operator by itself, there's kind of an assumed Kronecker product with an identity operator. So, um, you know, all of our operators should have basically one part that acts on the one, the first state cats, or the state cats belonging to the first particle and the Kronecker product with a second operator that only acts on the second particle states. So when I write this, there's, you know, I mean that it's Kronecker product with an identity. And then similar, similarly, if I just write an S2Z, is, I'm assuming that I have this Kronecker product with the, you know, this identity operator. So this is uh, uh, what we needed to to see because uh, these are both two by two matrices are represented by two by two matrices. So if I do that, you know, I get this. And now I have the Kronecker product of two two by two matrices. And the Kronecker product of two two by two matrices gives you a four by four matrix. 
Now, um, I'm not going to explain how you actually do the Kronecker product. In fact, I'm not actually sure. But you can go and just Google like a Kronecker product calculator and just plug in these matrices and it'll do it for you. And if you do that, you will get this. So this is our, Hamil our representation of our Hamiltonian in uh, this basis. And notice it's diagonal, which really we sh already knew um, that since this basis is an, uh, is an eigen, are, they're all eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. When I represent the Hamiltonian in this basis, my matrix should be diagonal. And the diagonals are just going to be the eigenvalues. So the diagonal should be minus gamma VH bar, zero, zero, and gamma VH bar, which of course, that's what we have. 